What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. It's Brian Leachy. In today's lesson, we are going to go over some of the basic information that you need in order for me as your teacher for life to be able to communicate to you. On top of that, we're going to go over some techniques that I feel need to be addressed when you are a beginner. A lot of folks struggle with pain and feeling weird when they're playing. Like they're just, they just look awkward and they feel awkward and they experience too many issues when you're not supposed to. I tell my students all the time, you should feel like you're just on the beach hanging out. You should be able to kick back, relax, play your G chord without a problem. That took me zero effort. It took me zero strain. I'm kicking back on the couch, totally relaxed. And that's how you should feel. So first, we're gonna go over some ways that I'm going to communicate to you. This way I can tell you where to put your hand on which string, in which place on the guitar. And you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go over a couple techniques that have helped me over time, not only as a player, but as a teacher as well. Many of my students have benefited from some of these technique things and have alleviated pain and stress and all these different things that you might go through as a beginner. And then I'm gonna teach you your first three chords and get you really going on the guitar. Now let's get started. Now, the first thing you're gonna need to know is your finger numbers. I need to tell you where to put your fingers, I need to tell you how to hold them, I need to tell you where they're gonna go. You need to know which number or which digit I'm talking about. So first off, if your hand is like this in guitar playing position, ready to go, you need to understand that your pointer finger is finger number one. Your middle finger is finger number two. Your ring finger is finger number three. And your pinky is finger number four. Your thumb will be counted as a T if it ever is used, but it does not have a numerical value. So you have fingers one, two, three, and four. Moving on. Now you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with your guitar just a little bit. This area where you do all the strumming, where all the beautiful colors are, this is called the body of your guitar. And what a beautiful body it is. Such curves, such colors. Your guitar's body is the location where you're going to be strumming your guitar. Strumming is the act of using your right hand, or if you're a lefty, it's gonna be the other way around. But in my case, I'm a righty, so I'm gonna be using my right hand. And it's the act of going down and up while whilst playing. Your guitar's body is gonna have all types of action happen to it when you play it, when you bump it, when you're jamming out, when you leave it in the hot, when you leave it in the cold, you leave it in your trunk by accident, man. Oh my God, the things that happen to it. You might notice mine has a little band-aid that I put a little design on. So it's up to you to pick the body style, the color, and all these different cool things about your guitar that really suit the kind of player that you aspire to be or that you already are. And that's the cool part about it. Some people like fancy cars, some people like fancy shoes. We like fancy guitars. All right, moving on. Now the next part of your guitar that you're gonna wanna understand is your guitar's neck. So just like us humans, we have beautiful bodies and we have necks. The neck or fretboard as it were, is where you're gonna be doing all the finger stuff, all the cool tricks and shreddy stuff that you wanna do, all your different various shapes to make and create chords. And you'll notice along your fretboard a few things. The first thing you'll see are these metal bars which divide the fretboard or the neck into sections. Now these metal bars are called frets. And what the frets do is they divide all the different areas of the fingerboard so that you have a space in which to place your fingers. Now most of the time when people say put finger one in the first fret, they don't mean to put it on the actual metal bar, not on the first fret. They mean the space to the left of it, the space behind it. All right, and you're typically gonna be as close to the fret as you can be, even when you're trying to fit multiple fingers in, as close as you can possibly get when it comes to, see how I'm, I'm pretty close to this fret without crossing over it, and I'm trying to get as, as tight as I can with the other fingers as well. When you're creating shapes. See all three of these fingers are behind it. They're not on it, they're behind it by a little bit. And that's what makes you able to get some pretty sounds out of it. Now also along your guitar's neck, you'll notice that my guitar has these sharp pointy thingies Every guitar is unique to what these look like, but the general idea is that these are called inlays. 
All right, and every guitar has inlays that are very different. Some have these, what are called shark teeth. Most have these little dots, little circular dots in the middle. Some have flowers, some have birds, some have all different cool designs, and it's up to you to find the ones that you like. Now, what these inlays mean, these, they're, called, they're also referred to as fret markers. They indicate the odd numbered frets up to a point. So some folks have one on the first fret, some folks don't. Typically it'll start on the third fret. So I have the first fret, the third fret, the fifth fret, the seventh fret, and the ninth fret. Now you might also notice that I have one over here. This is 9, 10, 11, 12. The importance of the 12th fret is that it is the octave of the open strings. We'll get to that in a bit. Now when you're standing or you're sitting above your guitar and you're looking down at it, it's not always easy to see the inlays. I find a lot of students going like this a lot. They bend their guitar and they try to go like this and they try to see what fret they're on. They count, they get all close. That causes strain. Even if you tried to play that and you try to be able to see this way, that causes strain on your wrist. It's easier to play this way. So what the guitar gods have done for us is they have placed inlays on the tops of your guitar. See, I even have dots here. So when I look down, I know which frets I'm in. So thus far, you've learned your finger numbers, one, two, three, and four. Thumb would be counted as a T. You've learned a little bit about the guitar's body. You also learned about the neck of your guitar. You learned that these are called frets. Your fingers go along the fret board. This space would be your first fret area, the second fret, the third fret, the fourth fret, and so on. So when I tell you, hey, please place finger number one in fret number three, you would go one, two, three. If I said place it in fret number one, you just put it right here. Fret number two, fret number three, and so forth. And finally, you learn what these inlays do and what their purpose is to mark the odd numbered frets and the octave. In my previous video, I explained that notes uh, possess different pitches, which are low, middle, and high, and that the, the alphabet repeats as you travel up and down the, the notes. So down here, I have a low sounding E, but when I go all the way up to the 12th fret, that's also an E, it's just higher. I can go up here. That's also an E, it's just much higher. So the 12th fret indicates the octave or the next of the same letter up from if I were to play my string open without touching any of the frets. So here's an E and then up here is also an E, just higher. Now, while we're looking at the fretboard, Let's get one thing straight. A lot of folks get confused about their string numbers. So take a look at your guitar, take a look at my guitar. If we are playing a standard guitar, no extra bells and whistles, we're not playing death metal right now, where we need like low tunings. A standard guitar will have one, two, three, four, five, six strings for us to shred upon. And a lot of folks start off believing that this top string is the first string, but it's not. Go into guitar understanding that your string count begins from the bottom. This is string number one along the bottom of your guitar. And as you go up, this is string number two. Number three, four, five, and six. So I will tell you, place finger number one in fret number three, on string number four, two, three, four. And that is how I'm going to communicate to you where your fingers go, which finger to use, where to put them, and how to make these shapes and different, all, the, all these different th patterns we're gonna learn as we endeavor on our guitar journey. Now the last thing you wanna get familiar with is your headstock. So we have a body, we have a neck, and then we have a head for our guitar. The head is typically where the logo is of your, of your guitar. This is where all the tuning pegs are, also known as machine heads. I believe these are the machine heads right here, where you wind the strings through. So these are the winders, these are the machines. You thread your strings through here, wind them up in a sp little special way, and when you turn your tuning pegs 
counterclockwise, your, the pitch will raise higher. If you turn them clockwise or kind of pull them towards you, the pitch will then lower. So counterclockwise or pushing forward away from you is higher and pulling back towards yourself or clockwise is then lower in pitch. I'll do a different lesson on tuning, but that's just the idea of what these guys do. Under here, if I were to unscrew this little panel, I would have access to what's called a truss rod that runs through my guitar's neck and keeps it, not only does it keep it straight, but it also flexes in ways that allow me to adjust my guitar's neck and make it you know, as straight or as curvy as I want it to be. That's another lesson as well. All right, my guitar Padawans, you are now much more familiar with your guitar than you were before. You are now able to be communicated with I can tell you which finger to use, which space to enter your finger into, and which string to place your finger on. Now let's finally get to playing, shall we? Today, I wanna to teach you your first three beginner chords. I really feel that these three chords are integral or integral in your guitar journey. Learning to navigate between these three different shapes is going to get you very used to changing the, the, the way your fingers go, the way the shapes that you're creating, and transferring between chord to chord smoothly, efficiently, and comfortably. Without feeling all the pain that beginners often feel, I wanna help you skip that as best as I can. So let's do it, let's get into the technique. All right, so now when you first pick up your guitar, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get comfortable with it. You'll notice that most guitars have this curvature at the bottom of the body. Now, what you wanna do is take that curvature and place it on your thigh, not at your knee, but at your thigh, and pull it nice and close to your belly. So it's right where your torso and your legs meet in this corner here. It'll be nice and close to you, you keep it snug. Now I tell a lot of my students about the chicken wing technique. So if you go like this, buck, 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 your elbow will kind of fall to the, the hip of the guitar. So where my, let's lift the sleeve up a little bit, where the crease of my elbow is here, it ends up kind of right where the hip of the body is. So if I do this little chicken wing thing, buck, 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 the crease of my arm is where the hip is. And from there, you just drop your arm in this kind of motion. You pivot it downwards. You don't want your armpit to go over the guitar and play like this. You wanna sit up straight, do the chicken wing, get your, the crease of your elbow onto the hip of your guitar. Some guitars are thicker, so you might be a little bit more forward. Some are thinner, so you'd be a little bit more back. But the same concept applies. You don't want your armpit over. Chicken wing it up, drop your hand in this kind of motion and relax the wrist and the fingers. You might be holding a pick, and if you're holding a pick, you wanna make this kind of like okay symbol, this okie dokie symbol. Your right hand should comfortably drop, just kind of like you're talking to a friend, you're hanging out, and should be right above this area of the guitar. Not above the, where the neck of your guitar is, but more central. Uh, if you have an acoustic guitar, it'll be pretty much above the circle, the sound hole here. Electric guitars, it'll be right above the pickups. Generally between this pickup, the one near the neck, and if you have a middle one, so right around this little area. Even I might aim between these two black ones, I'll aim in this orange space. Eh, depends. You'll end up hitting, you know, anywhere in this little area. But regardless of where you hit, the concept applies that you should be comfortable. So you have your elbow crease on the hip of your guitar, like that, like so. You drop your arm. Do not put your whole armpit over. Just drop it forward, relax the wrist, relax the fingers. And one way I get folks started is by pretending, is by having them pretend that there's a little guy that they make out of their fingers and he gets to the strings and he needs to, and he wants to kick them. So the little dude, he comes by and he kicks. So that little flick is a really nice way 
to get started if you don't have a pick, if you're not used to a pick yet. So you want to drop your hand, bend your pointer finger back a little bit, and use kind of the back of your fingernail and, and the, the corner of your finger. Not, you're not going to go like this and try to use the tip. You're going to use the corner of your finger and go like this. You can even pretend like there's water on your fingertips and you're going like this to flick the water off. And as you do that, your, your finger is going back and forth. You could also catch it on the up. So I think in general, that's a great starting point. Bring, bring the guitar close to your body on your thigh, put your elbow down, drop your hand, and you'll be in a nice position, as long as you're nice and relaxed. Now, first off, most folks, when they first get going, they believe that they are to come up at their guitar like this. In certain cases, that's correct, but in, as a beginner, that's not really the way you wanna attack your guitar. When you hold your hand like this, like you'd like to give a handshake of some kind, that feels natural, it feels good to you. You could even turn your thumb, your hand sideways with your palm down, but turning your palm up this way, and any further than this begins to strain you. So the more you go like this and try to come up at your guitar, the more you'll feel tension. So loosen up your wrist, shake it out. I'd like to start you off like this. Make a thumbs up. Put that thumb on the back of your guitar. So now you should have your thumbs up somewhere like this. Now you want your thumb to be centered in the guitar just to start. It is going to end up moving up. It is gonna end up moving down. But just to get yourself going, place it centered. Now you don't wanna bend it either. Don't bend it. Keep it flat like a thumbs up. Go right ahead, give it a try. Good job, ugly approves. Now your thumb is up like this. I would like you to open up your hand as if to give a handshake. You'll notice there's a nice bit of space between my first finger, pointy finger, and the bottom of the guitar here. Let's rotate a little bit. So now we're sitting here with our thumb flat against the back of the guitar, a little space between the guitar and our first finger, and our fingers are now stacked vertically like a snowman in the air. This is going to alter, it is going to change, you are going to rotate and pivot and do things like that, but this is where you begin. Now let's see if you were paying attention before. Let's move our thumb down a little bit, somewhere between the first and second fret. Now in my previous video, I, I mentioned that notes are named by letters of the alphabet. The same concept applies to chords. Chords are also named by letters of the alphabet. Today, we're gonna to start with the very first letter of the alphabet, which is the A chord. So we're gonna learn the A chord. You're gonna take finger number two, which is your middle finger, and you're going to come across your guitar so you might turn a little bit, but not so much that you're like this. Just come across your guitar at an, at an angle, and you're gonna to wanna to curl your fingers, okay? So if I come to this angle, you'll see a curlage of the fingers. From this angle, you'll also see that I'm not cranked like this. I am, uh, my fingers are still horizontal to each other. Okay, so your fingers curled, you're gonna place your middle finger upon the one, two, three, fourth string in the second fret. So this is one, this is two. I'm trying to get you at all the angles here. Now we're gonna to want to we're gonna to try to fit three fingers into one space. So I can't very well put my fingers next to each other like this and try to fit them in. So I still have to keep my fingers horizontal because now what I plan to do is I'm gonna move over just a bit with my middle finger on the fourth string and use my third finger and place it on the one, two, third string, right beneath my, my, my middle finger. Now I'm still not cranking my wrist like Spider-Man here. I'm about to shoot a web. My wrist is, is slightly dropped. My thumb is still at the back of the guitar and there's a slight angle away from myself towards the headstock. Not so much that your elbow is bent, but just enough that you don't feel stress and that your fingers are aligned. I'm also using 
the tippity tippity tips of my fingers. Okay, I'm not using the fingerprints and a super horrible habit to have is to allow your knuckles to collapse. That is horrible. You wanna lift your fingers. So let's come back around. Now we'd like to take our pinky and place it on the second string, also in the second fret. So now I have three fingers horizontally placed into the second fret, fourth string, third string, and second string. My pointer finger is just hanging out, relaxing. You ever see a friend and you go, hey, what up, dude? That's how you can do it. You can point at me and you can say, hey, this is the A chord. Now, for this, you might, you can drop your thumb and drop your wrist. Some people like to do that. Some people like to bring their thumb over the top. It's really about comfort for you. Let's get another angle on it. Make sure you keep your guitar close to your body as well. Now you'll see here, I have my middle finger on the fourth string, my ring on the third, and my pinky on the second. <laughs> There's a nice big circle right here, a gap between my hand and the bottom of the guitar here. This allows for all my strings to vibrate. Now I want my bottom string to be uninterrupted so that it could vibrate all the way to the end here. But if my pinky collapses, it's going to be interrupted at this point, okay? We don't want that. So ensure that your fingers are as rounded as a rainbow. Pretend these are colors of the rainbow and you're making this really rounded shape. Now we're gonna come over to the body of the guitar here and we're going to take our pick or our finger or our thumb or what have you. Let's use the corner of our thumb in case you don't have a pick just yet. So you wanna use the corner of the thumb and let's just go from the one, two, three, four, five, fifth string down. Okay, that's one at a time. Now, a chord is created when we play all these notes at the same time. So let's see if we can try to get a simultaneous ringing of the strings. There you go. You have created an A chord. For me, I'm most comfortable with my left hand and my thumb comes kind of around the top. Okay, so we're gonna break the rule of you bending it. And now you're gonna put your thumb over the top. If I were to remove the guitar from my hand, the pressure that I'm creating is squeezing into my palm right here. I'm not trying to pinch like a lobster or a crab like this. The pressure is here. Okay, so if I create this A shape, place my guitar back to where it needs to be, place my fingers correctly, and move over a bit. You can have your thumb up, you can have your thumb down, you can have your wrist down, whatever you need to do, just don't hyperextend where you're like this. Whatever you need to do to get the fifth string and down, to chime out and make a beautiful sound. So now you have an A chord right here. You can use that to create melody, but now we need to create rhythm. So let's try doing four downward strums with our right hand and try to keep it nice and steady. So watch this. We have our A chord on our left hand and we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Try to ensure that your strings are all being played at the same time. You wanna have a very gentle touch with your right hand. You don't wanna, you don't wanna dig into your strings. Your pick or your thumb or whatever you're using doesn't have to go deep into the guitar. You then wanna relax these three fingers. A lot of my students start and they have like this clenched fist and it's just really hard, you know? You gotta loosen up. No bones in the wrist, no bones in the fingers and a light enough grip that you're not squeezing the, the pick, but you can hold it and move around without dropping it, okay? Now one more tip and then we'll move on to the next chord. When you're strumming, everything's relaxed. You wanna have your pick slightly angled to where the point is facing up towards yourself. 
not straight up like this. You want it to be able to hit the strings, right? So I'm not gonna come straight at the guitar horizontally. You can, it's just a little aggressive. Even to me, it's awkward to do that. So what you wanna do to create less resistance, you slightly tilt your pick up by rotating your wrist a little bit, still avoiding your fingers touching the strings. So now my pick is angled slightly upwards and it floats down the strings nice and smoothly. The same concept applies if you were to go the other way. Turn your pick slightly downwards and come up. And now you're creating this sort of swaying motion as though you're conducting a symphony orchestra or you are a wave of beautiful musical energy. There's this nice C. If, if I were to try to make a C, and then go the other way. Now you don't want to be too exaggerated where you're going. You won't be accurate, but you want to have a nice. Slight tilting of the wrist. There's a little bit of a flick to it as well. I guess it's not that exaggerated. And you want to get these strings all, oh, excuse me, all singing out at the same time. Let's move on to the next chord. So we have the A chord, the B chord, the C chord, D, E, F, and G, right? We just learned A. Now, the, the next easiest chord in the list of chords would be an E. So that's what we're going to learn next today. And going from this shape of an A to an E is actually pretty simple. So let's learn this transfer real quick. So what we're going to do first is you have your A shape. Now let's remove the pinky. You're going to place your first finger now on the one, two, third string and get pretty close to that metal bar. And now these two fingers are going to lift off ever so slightly. So uh, no longer are they making contact with the guitar. And my first finger is kind of balancing me. It's hoisting me. So I was here. I'm going to lift up, use my first finger to balance. Now both of these fingers are going to go up by one. So I go one, one, and I place them down. Now my middle finger is on the fifth string, my ring finger, third finger is on the fourth string, excuse me, and my pointer finger is on the third string. The E chord requires that you play all six strings. Now for me, I like to keep the same grip as the A, where my thumb is kind of up top here, but feel free if you need to lower your wrist a little bit, lower your thumb, and create a bigger circle, like a space under here, to let your strings freely vibrate. Go ahead. So you could drop your wrist or you could be up here. If you're up here, try not to let your thumb hit this string. If I were to remove the guitar, my pressure is, toward, is still towards the palm, towards this meaty part of my thumb, of my palm. All right? And now we are to strum from the sixth string, so the very top, down. So just like we did with the A chord, let's count to four. One, two, three, four. Now a wonderful exercise for you to begin doing just from learning your A and your E chords is to go from the A chord shape, which is like this, and go one, two, three, four. Then as fast as you can, place your pointer finger down Take your pinky off and lift these two fingers up at the same time to be on the fifth and fourth string now. One, two, three, four. So over time you'll be like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Going back and forth between these two shapes, they're similar enough where there's not too much motion going on, 
but different enough where, you know, it takes a little bit of a little bit of dexterity. It's a very healthy exercise for you as a beginner. Now the goal is to kind of not to do these as separate movements. You don't want to go pointer, pinky, up. You really want to take it as one motion. So from here, you can place your pinky, your pointer finger down to get yourself ready. It doesn't affect the sound. Then you just jump these the two middle fingers up. We'll take a little getting used to, but be patient with yourself. You got this. Now the final chord I'd like to teach you today is the D chord. I think D is not that it's the easiest chord, but it is a beginner chord and it's simple enough where it's a little bit more challenging than these two shapes, the A and the E but it's not as hard as like an F or a C or some other shapes that are along the guitar. I think D is a wonderful chord to learn next. And it's also melodically correct with the other ones. So that way, what I, and what I mean by that is that it will match their sound. So let's learn the D chord. Let's begin here. Let's take your second finger, place it on the first string of the second fret, and you still wanna have it at that angle. So if you need to, don't forget to do your handshake position, but this chord, you're gonna to wanna to kinda of bring your fingers a little bit higher, but still leave a little space right here. Come across the guitar and create this curlage, okay? You don't wanna come at your guitar like this or like that, I don't even know. You need to curl your fingers and use the tippity tip of your fingers, not the fingerprint, but the tip, and apply pressure to the bottom string, the first string, second fret. Your first finger is next. It's gonna go to the one, two, third string, same fret. So now you'll notice that I'm still pretty horizontal, a slight angle, but pretty horizontal. I'm not like this, Horiz I'm sorry. I meant to say vertical. I'm not horizontal now, I'm vertical. That's what I meant to say. And my fingers are tight. There's no gap here. You don't wanna have them separated like this. If you find that you're separated, keep your middle finger close to the bar and bring your pointer finger over, okay? Now my thumb likes to come up, up to the top here. That's how I do it. But if you need to drop a little bit, that's okay. It's up to your comfort. Test both, test different thumb positions. Now the last thing you're gonna do, take your third finger, place it on the one, two, second string. Now I did say to be on your tippies, but at the same time, this is a funny feeling. So you're allowed to use the corner of your finger as opposed to the tip, as long as you're not on your fingerprint and you don't do this weird collapsing thing. Don't let your knuckle collapse. Round out your fingers, create a circle land on the corner of your finger and apply pressure down to the wood. Okay, so all your fingers squeeze down to the wood. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to strum from the fourth string, one, two, three, four, down. Same exercise, one, two, three, four. The biggest issue with the D chord is that your ring finger likes to, the meat of it, like the fingerprint, the padding of it, likes to touch the first string like this, which causes the string to be unable to vibrate, to ring out. It needs to, it's being stopped here by the meat of your finger. You need to lift your finger so as to free the string. You see how there's nothing touching? So you must find a way to get these two together. Excuse me. And this one over to the third fret, probably as far as you can get it. And also rounded here, not flattened. That's horrible. Rounded, so lift it and avoid the bottom string so you can get that nice tone out of it. So now here's the last exercise. 
you're going to go like this. From the fourth string down, you'll play D four times. One, two, three, four. Now here's a nice little flip. This is a great switch to practice. Go to A, middle finger on the fourth, ring on the third, pinky on the second string, all in the second fret, fifth string down. One, two, three, four. All right, now take your pointer, put it on the third string of the first fret, jump these two middle fingers up at the same time, take your pinky away, all six strings. One, two, three, four. Now you can go back, so take off your pointer finger. Actually, you know what? You should probably move these, these first. So bring these two middle fingers down again, add your pinky to the second string, so I went from the fifth and fourth string down to the fourth and third, added my pinky, I removed my pointer. Five down, back to A. So the exercise is D four times, A four times, E four times, back to A. You'll notice my thumb is changing, so don't be afraid to alter it as you need to. Even from D, I have to move over a little bit from here to here. It has to come all the way around for me to accomplish that. Some folks can't do that. If you can't reach, don't worry about it. Stick it straight up. Put it slightly in the corner. Whatever is comfortable for you. Bend it if you need to. I don't recommend this way. It's not that it's wrong, but it just it doesn't feel very it feels a little goofy. So you're gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Repeat. Two, three, four. A, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. Then you can work on going down and up. Now instead of counting one, two, three, four, you're going to want to count one and two and three and four and so you say the word and in between the numbers like so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and you got it four and one and two and three and four and what a great job you guys are doing thank you so much for bearing with me for like i don't even know how long this video is going to be but it's probably going to be like half hour <laughs> but i hope as a beginner between my previous video and this video combined you're getting a better idea of where to start, where to go, how to start getting things sounding good, and just working on new shapes and new understandings. What you can do with those things you just learned is you can start off slow, and then start to pick up speed over time. So I think right about there is where we'll leave it. I think that's plenty of information for you to soak up for the day. And I truly hope that it's been very helpful for you. Now pick up that guitar every single day. Practice your Ds, your As, your Es, your As, your Ds, your As, your Es, your As, your strumming ups and downs. Memorize your finger numbers, okay? Body, neck, head, stock, frets, okay? Strings. One, two, three, four, five, and six. If you enjoyed today's class, please like and subscribe. Please follow, please share, whatever it is you guys gotta do. I'm not much of a beggar. I just hope you were entertained and that you found it helpful. And I hope you return back to my channel for more information. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you guys have a great day.